Hey everyone, it's Val, aka Tricky Crayon. Something you might not know about me, and something that would surprise you if you've known me for a long time, is that I really like spiders. A few years ago, I started hanging out on our spiders to try to counteract my arachnophobia. I would visit daily, clicking every link and just looking at photos of spiders. In part, the motivation was to help me understand just how harmless these creatures are, and in part, it was simply exposure therapy. Either way, I sort of became obsessed. I'd ID species that I was confident in, leave the ones I wasn't, and sometimes watch a thread to see what experts thought if I was unclear on an ID. This has resulted in me becoming something of an amateur spider specialist, and it means I have a lot of passion around the subject. In this three-part series, I'm going to cover the following topics, medically significant spiders, spider myths, and common spiders of New England. Now the first thing I'm going to cover, because I think most folks find it the most important, are the medically significant spiders we're so often told to fear, the black widow and the brown recluse. Of these two, you've only got to worry about one in New England. Can you guess which? It's the black widow, genus Latrodectus. There are a few species within this genus. Ours is Latrodectus variolus, the northern black widow. They're pretty distinct that pure black spider with a red hourglass on the underside of the abdomen you've undoubtedly seen dozens of times in media. And the ones we get up here often have some red spotting up the back of the abdomen as well. Here are some images of immature specimens and males, both of which are harmless. If you ever come across a black widow, you do best to simply leave it alone. They aren't aggressive. Very few spiders can be accurately described as aggressive, to be honest. And frankly, their name is far more ominous than they deserve. The use of widow in the common name refers to the female's purported tendency to consume the male shortly after mating. However, this isn't actually a particular proclivity of the black widow spider, and other species do it far more commonly and aren't labeled widows. Just be careful if you're digging around in old wood or rock piles or anywhere that one could be hiding. They do tend to prefer secluded areas, and you'll be all right. Even a pair of thick gardening gloves should be enough to keep you safe. While brown recluses, Loxosceles reclusa, don't exist up here, I'm going to cover them on the off chance that you might travel into their range. When I say brown recluses don't exist up here, I absolutely 100% mean that. Here's a map of their range. You'll note that it includes the following states, many only partially. Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia. If you aren't in those states, it's not a recluse. This is something of a point of contention among us spider folks since people tend to insist that they've seen one or heard a story of someone being bitten by one well outside their range. So please don't leave your story in the comments of how your cousin's sister's boyfriend definitely got bitten by one in Oregon in 2003. As you can see, none of the states I listed are in or anywhere near New England. I do not care who has pointed at a brown spider in your New England state and shriekingly insisted it was a recluse. Heck, I've had biologists try to tell me that we have them up here. It absolutely was not. Brown recluse spiders are relatively distinct, with a round cephalothorax that clearly displays a violin pattern. For this reason, they're also known as fiddleback spiders. This is not to be confused with the male southern house spider, which some folks think has a similar pattern, but which has very distinct, extremely long pedipalps that make it easy to differentiate from a brown recluse. If you look close enough at a cellar spider, those too can appear to have a fiddle pattern, but they look very different overall from a brown recluse, and you'll find them hanging in webs, not hiding under furniture. That's a pretty important characteristic of the brown recluse spider. They're reclusive. They have that in common with the black widow spider. You're not likely to encounter one hanging about during the day wanting to play with you like jumping spiders. Generally speaking, recluses are under furniture or sometimes in clothes or towels that are lying on the floor, which is why it's generally recommended that if you live in range of brown recluse spiders, you A, don't leave your clothes on the floor in the first place, and B, shake them out before wearing if you have left them on the floor. 
Now I'm going to undermine my range point a little bit here and say that there are occasionally isolated inventive populations of brown recluse spiders that have been found in places like New York City. However, these are extremely rare and the population that I'm aware of in New York is actually Loxosceles rufescens, the Mediterranean recluse, not Loxosceles reclusa, the more feared and known to be medically significant brown recluse. For more information on the brown recluse spider, check out this video by our spider's moderator and entomologist, Quower Power. Hopefully this video has helped you to better understand the medically significant spiders in the United States and to understand that there's really not much to fear from them. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments as I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.